In our next problem, we're going to look at the properties required for having a group. Show that the mathematical system for the 4-hour modulo 4 clock system under the operation of clock addition is a commutative group. Present your work clearly, naming and explaining one property at a time. Just verify one example for the associative property. So, let's start off with the closure property, which is required in order to call this a group. We're going to refer back to the previous problem where we filled out the chart under the operation of clock addition. Notice that all of our results are back in the original set, and because of this, we can state that the closure property holds. Next, in order to be a group, we need to consider the associative property. We're told that we only want to verify one example for the associative property. So we're just going to pick some elements. For instance, we can take 3 plus 1 plus 2, and we can try to see whether or not that's going to be equal to 3 plus 1, in parentheses, plus 2. Now, we'll refer back to our table to do the arithmetic. We'll start off with 1 plus 2. According to our table, 1 plus 2 is going to give us a result of 3. And then let's continue with this side of the equation. 3 plus 3, 3 plus 3 gives us a result of 2. So on the left-hand side of the equation, our answer is 2. Let's see what we come up with on the right-hand side. We start off with evaluating 3 plus 1. We add 3 plus 1 and come down to where the row and column intersect to give us our answer of 0. And then 0 plus 2, we can do the same thing with the table, 0 plus 2 gives us a result of 2. And so we can see that the associative property is going to hold for this example, and we'll assume that it holds in all cases. The next thing we need to consider is whether we can, I can find an identity element. Now, remember that an identity element occurs when we start with an element from the set, such as A, we combine it with the identity, and we come up with the result being A. And here, our operation is going to be a plus sign for clock arithmetic. So let's see what we can figure out by looking at this table of values. We need to end up coming up with the value 0, 1, 2, 3 when we add it to the element from the top row. Well, notice that if we take the value 0 and we add it to each of these, we come up with those values as the result. Let's double check it in the other order. If we start with the top row and add 0 to it, see that we end up with those elements repeated. So therefore, we can identify 0 as the identity element. And then we want to look for inverses. We have to have inverse for each element in order to say that this is a group. So we're going to identify the inverses for each of the elements. We have four different elements. We have 0, 1, 2, and 3. To find an inverse, we need to combine the element with its inverse and end up with the identity. And we need to make sure that this would occur in the opposite order also. In other words, if we change the order of addition, we need to come up with the identity again. So let's just double check this. 0 plus what would give us 0? Well, that one's pretty easy. If we add 0 to itself, we end up with 0. 1 plus what gives us 0? Let's check the table. We need to come up with the result of 0 by adding 1 to another value. If we take 1 and add 3 to it, we come up with 0. So 1 plus 3 is going to give us 0. 2 plus what gives us 0? Again, using the table, we're looking for a result of 0, and we can see that that occurs when we add 2 to itself, to 2. And then 3 plus what gives us 0? Again, back to the table. If we take 3 and add that to 1, we come up with 0. So 3 plus 1 equals 0. Now, we don't have to worry about commutative property because we see that 0 is its own inverse. We can see that 1 plus 3 is 0, and that's the same as 3 plus 1. So 1 is going to be the inverse of 3, and 3 is going to be the inverse of 1. And then 2 is its own inverse. 
So we've identified the four properties that are required for it being a group. The other thing that we're asked to do is show that this is a commutative group. And that means that we just need to verify that we're going to have the commutative property holding. Well, when we look at a table of values, it's very nice to be able to have the table because we can see commutativity by doing the following. If I draw a diagonal down the middle, now these would be all the results of adding an element to itself, then you can see that we have symmetry on each side. And when we have the symmetry, for instance, 3 added to 1 is 3, and 1 added to to, sorry, 3 added to 1 is 0 here, and 0 added to 3 is 0. We can see the symmetry across this diagonal. Then we're going to have commutativity. So we can verify commutativity by looking for the symmetry. To verify this, we're going to look back at the chart that we completed a few moments ago. Let's look for commutativity in the chart. And the way we can do this is to notice that if we draw a diagonal, along this line. These would be all the results of adding the element to itself. Now, we're going to look to either side of that diagonal. And what we're going to notice is symmetry in the chart. And whenever this occurs, this is telling us that, for instance, if we add 1 plus 3, we come up with the answer of 0. If we go to 3 plus 1, we come up with the answer of 0. You can see that those are symmetric to each other along this diagonal. So whenever we have the symmetry, we have commutativity.